The first look at James Gunn's The Suicide Squad is here, and we have your intro to the cast and characters for DC's next wild blowout and the biggest movie James Gunn has ever made. What's up, Comic Book Nation? BD here, and just like you, I watched that first look at The Suicide Squad during DC Fandom, and I would say my mind is blown, but well, that takes a whole new meaning when you're talking about The Suicide Squad. Who are these people? What can they do? We finally know the characters this stacked cast is playing, and there were definitely a few surprises in there, so without further ado, let's meet the squad. First of all, no surprise, Margot Robbie is back as Harley Quinn and she's probably the only member of the OG Suicide Squad who's gonna really have a major role in this movie. That said, she probably has no real story threads influenced by the first Suicide Squad movie or Birds of Prey. She's got a new look, it's a bit more comic accurate with the black and red and we're all still wanting to see her in the full-on jester suit. Let's just hope her head doesn't explode. Idris Elba's character was finally revealed. First, we thought he was the new Deadshot when he was cast in the movie. Then we thought he was Vigilante when we saw pictures of him on set. Now, we know he's neither. Elba is playing Bloodsport. If you're asking who the hell is Bloodsport, that's okay. So did pretty much everybody else. Bloodsport, a.k.a. Robert Dubois, first appeared in Superman Volume 2, number 4, in 1987. He's a John Wick-level henchman for Lex Luthor with strong ties to Superman, obviously, so no idea whether or not that's going to be a factor in this movie. He's going to have some awesome weapons and armor built into himself as a character, as you can see from the looks at him, so he's going to be pretty deadly. Storm Reid was at the panel for The Suicide Squad. She's playing Bloodsport's daughter, and this is a unique story for the movie, which might be production adapting to Will Smith's Deadshot dropping out of the movie or never being involved because he had a similar story to follow up on after the first squad, but we can't say this is the case for sure, so that's just purely speculation on my part. John Cena is playing Peacemaker. The character's costume is super colorful, lots of bright colors, red, yellow, blue, and a shiny silver helmet because why not? You can't see him, you might as well see yourself in the reflection. Peacemaker in the comics is named Christopher Smith. He was in the army at 18. He fought in the Vietnam War, but because he first appeared in 1966 in the books, he might have a new origin story where he fought in a different war. That makes sense, huh? Peacemaker finds himself in prison after he massacres a whole village of innocent people thanks to bad info while he was in the military. And it looks like Cena's bringing a little bit of humor, but also a lot of intensity. He's also bringing his massive guns plus dual wielding weapons as well. Joel Kinnaman as Colonel Rick Flagg is back. He's looking a lot more casual this time, dropping a bit of the gritty soldier shtick and taking on a yellow shirt, much more comics accurate. It's got his name written on it in the concept art, probably not in the movie. But he's got the dual pistol holster thing going and he's looking pretty badass. Flulaborg is playing Javelin. He's pretty self-explanatory. He throws a Javelin really well. He also wears a mask, not unlike Canary. He looks fairly comics accurate by comparison to this character in the books. James Gunn definitely isn't being shy about bringing bright colors to costumes. Javelin's a good hand-to-hand -hand fighter, but given the fact Harley is carrying his Javelin at one point in the trailer, he might not make it very far. King Shark is coming to the squad. Steve Agee performed the motion capture for this and he looks absolutely awesome. This might be the one that has me really, really the most geeked about the movie. I kind of want to see King Shark interact with Killer Croc from the first squad, but I don't think Adewale Akinuya Agbahe is coming back this time. King Shark isn't rocking the hammerhead look we see most often in comics. He's instead a much more upright, great white looking badass. I'm sure James Gunn has plenty up his sleeves and we're all about to fall in love with a giant shark. I personally just really want to see King Shark eat another member of the squad, rip a bit straight from the comics, like how he eats Yo-Yo in that one book and then Yo-Yo is living inside of him. You know James Gunn would have a blast with that kind of thing. David Desmalchian, I love this guy by the way, super nice dude. You may know him from the Dark Knight and the Ant-Man movies. He's in the Suicide Squad as Polka Dot Man, real name Abner Krill. His power set is gonna be wild. He can kind of grow and expand and glow, but he can turn his polka dots into weapons, which is gonna be insane. In comics, he's commonly a Batman villain. He's launched crime waves in Gotham City. He debuted in Detective Comics number 300 and James Gunn wanted him in the squad. He clearly just went around and was like, how many obscure characters can I make famous? And here we are, talking about them and geeks to see them on the big screen. Michael Rooker, who James had as Yondu in Guardians of the Galaxy, is in this one as Savant. The white hair, the goggles, the red garb. He looks great. Just more proof that Gunn is straight up bringing a comic book to life. Savant is a genius. He's a super skilled fighter and he's a charming guy in the comics who has played pretty big roles in Birds of Prey stories. So if he survives this, which he very well might not, like a lot of this cast and characters, 
Maybe he pops up in a sequel over there. Boomerang also comes back from the OG squad. We saw him very briefly in a picture in Birds of Prey where his wanted poster was slapped on a wall and Harley Quinn recognized him from their first outing together. Jai Courtney is back this time around. He was one of the best parts of the original film. It is cool to see that he's got some new boomerangs they strapped to his chest and in this action-packed beach sequence. He can throw them and they glow in the dark, but I'm still thinking the OGs might be some of the first to go in this movie. So in the words of Gunn himself when he tweeted that cast list, don't get too attached. Here is Peter Capaldi as the thinker. He's looking like an absolute horror movie. It's like a comic booked up Hellraiser on his face. He's had a lot of different looks through the years in the comics, and I can't say that this is exactly in line with any one of them, but clearly the thinking cap is a part of this getup if it's not just totally built into the character's head. This wouldn't be a James Gunn comic book movie if Sean Gunn wasn't portraying an animal, right? And that's where Weasel comes in. Weasel looks a little crazy. He's got those crazy eyes going for him. It seems pretty dirty all around. He'll probably get along with another filthy villain. Ratcatcher looks pretty comics accurate in being raggedy and dirty and loving rats. Big eyed mask and all. You love to see the comics come to life in accurate form and this controlling sewer rats thing is probably going to be one hell of a power to see used in a movie. The King of Staten Island himself, Pete Davidson, checks in as Blackguard, a character who looks very different by comparison to his DC Comics counterpart. Blackguard is commonly a Booster Gold villain and we all want Nathan Fillion to play Booster Gold in a DC movie. But he's playing a character who is totally made up for the movie and non-existent in the comics called the Detachable Kid here. This whole group, of course, is managed by Amanda Waller. Viola Davis is back and so are the power suits, so we can only assume she's ready to make some heads explode. What was your favorite part of the Suicide Squad footage? Do you love the character designs? Do you have any questions about them? Share your thoughts in the comments section or feel free to send them my way on Instagram at BrandonDavisBD. And if you're watching ComicBook.com on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and turn on the post notifications. We have new episodes of The Daily Distraction with Chris Killian every weekday, the second printing with myself every Saturday, and all the big news and updates and theories and speculation you want to be a part of throughout the week. For more, head over to ComicBook.com slash DC. I'm BD. I'll see you there.